Yeah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. My name is Dr. Muhammad Muzammil Hassan, and today we'll talk about something about the DCAD. So, in this video, we'll learn about what is the asset-based balance. Secondly, what is the importance of this DCAD management? Number three, how can we manage this DCAD in the ration of the animals? Number four, how to calculate the DCAD in the ration of the animals? So, these are the three, four basic things we will learn in today's lecture. So, what is basically a DCAD? As the name indicates, it is the dietary, cation, and A9 balance in the ration of the animals. So, usually, what are the cations? These are the positive ions. And what are the A9? These are the negative ions. So, usually in the ration, these two must be neutral. So, when the A9 is they are more in the diet, we said that the diet is anionic, or we can say the DCAD is negative. And when the positive ions are more in the diet, we say that the diet is cationic, or the DCAD is positive. And if the A9 and the cation they are equal, we can say that the DCAD is zero. So, there are many cations and anions in the diet, but usually the most important cations are sodium and potassium. And when we talk about the anions, the most important are chloride and sulfur. So, why do we need to balance, to manipulate the DCAT in the ration of the animals, especially when we talk about in the close-up diet? So, guys, you need to know one thing. As I'm talking about the management of the close-up cows, the cows which are near to the pasturation, the most important thing that is the blood calcium level. So you need to remember that the calcium is really important to regulate the function of the gut, to regulate the motility in the gut and the reproductive tract. So if the calcium is not up to the mark, the animal may have hypocalcemia, it will lead to the problems at the calving, it can lead to the decry uterine contractions, it can lead to purpural metritis, it can lead to retained fetal membranes and when you talk about the GIT, it can lead to displaced abomasum. And some studies also suggest that these issues can also lead to the increased incidences of other edema. So we need to manage the DCAD to avoid all these sort of issues. Now the, the question is, how this DCAD is important in balancing the blood calcium levels? So we usually, the dietary ketine and ion difference manipulation in the ration is to, manip is to uh, achieve a better blood calcium level at the time of calving. So how it helps to achieve better blood calcium. So listen guys, the negative DCAD, it is responsible for metabolic acidosis. So the studies have proved that if there is metabolic acidosis, then it increases the uh, the functionality of the parathyroid hormone so you can say that the parathyroid hormone receptors they work better at low ph secondly it increases the responsiveness to the pth hormone and ultimately the resorption of the calcium from the bone is increased and ultimately more calcium is available in the blood and of course the blood calcium level they are maintained at a certain limit remember guys when you talk, talk about the hypocalcemia, it is clinical, it is subclinical. So remember, the most dangerous one is subclinical. You don't think that the clinical hypocalcemia is dangerous because when there is clinical hypocalcemia, you get a sign and septum, you are going to treat the animal and you are going to take care of the animal. When there is subclinical hypocalcemia, it is difficult to just to diagnose the animal in the shed of 130, 140, 50 animals and just pinpoint an animal in the hypocalcemia when there are a lot of animals. It is of course a matter of a bit uh, a difficulty to, to, to judge that animal. So remember that the blood calcium level should be maintained at a particular limit. We can maintain it by the proper decay diet. So as I have told you. Uh, that the major cations are the are the sodium and potassium you need to sum up sodium and potassium and you need to uh, did, uh, you need to uh, subtract it from the the sum of chloride chloride and the sulfur ions so that is what we call about uh, talk about the decad so usually we measure it in milli equivalent per 100 gram of the dry matter this is a unit in which we measure this and usually in the close up diets the level of decad should be minus 10 to minus 15 milli equivalent 
per 100 gram of the dry matter. So how can we achieve that? Remember one thing, whatever Russian you are using, it has a certain level of cations and anions. You can check that, you can go with the uh, mineral analysis of the field you are giving. If you don't have uh, the proper tools to check the mineral profile of the Russian, then at the end of the video I have shown you the way you can get some, some values close to the, the, the most, uh, you can say, uh, nearest possible values that can be achieved from that feedypedia.org source I have shown at the end of the video. So, this t cat balancing, it helps in the close-up management of the sources of the, the major sources of the anions. It is the calcium chloride, magnesium chloride, ammonium chloride, and similarly ammonium sulfate, calcium sulfate, and the magnesium sulfate. Remember, the calcium chloride, that is the most effective one when we talk about the anionic diets. But there is one problem with that it also leads to the depression of the dry matter intake. So it should be maintained at a certain limit so that the dry matter intake is not hampered. It should not exceed by 0.8% of the dry matter. Usually we keep it about 0.5% of the dry matter. It works better at uh, this percentage of the dry matter. Secondly, how can we check that whether the diet we are providing to the animal so is it having a proper decad balance or not? The, or the way to check is that we check the pH. So usually when you give the anionic diets, the blood pH is reduced and you can check that pH through the urine as well. Because the theory is that if the blood pH is low, the pH of the urine is also low. So check the pH of the animal time and again during the closer period for a Jersey cow it should be about 5.5 to 6 for, for a, the Holstein cow it should be about 6 to 6.5 so on an average we can say that from 5.5 to 6.2 pH is required for an animal in uh, which is near to the closer period so this is a ideal situation if the pH is less than 5.5 it means there are more anions in your diet if the pH is more than 6.5, it is more than 7, it means the cations are very high in the diet and the blood calcium levels will be low. So this is a basic philosophy, how can we check the, uh, how can we check the decad that whether our ration which we are providing to the animals is uh, having a proper decad or not. Remember one thing, that feeding the anionic salts is important because usually if we uh, you analyze the rations what we provide to in our routine matter it is usually deficient in anions so we need to supplement the anionic salts to the animal in order to achieve a negative decay but remember one thing as i have told you earlier that the depression of dry matter intake can take place and secondly if you are not providing the anionic salts in a proper way it can lead to the death of the animal as well yes I repeat, in some cases it can lead to the death of the animals if the anionic sites, if they are not provided correctly. For example, if I say I am providing ammonium chloride in the diet of the animal and the mixing is not proper in the TMR and some animal is taking more ammonium chloride, it leads to ammonia toxicity and can have, can have serious consequences. So, usually we can use uh, the commercially available products, they are, they are very good. And the research is quite fine the palatability is quite fine so we can reduce the problem we can uh, we can increase the palatability of the ration of in the closer period by maintaining a, a very good product very good commercial product which are uh, uh, which are studied by through various experiments now i will tell you how can we measure the decad of our diet the first step is we need to calculate the sodium, potassium, chloride and the sulfur ions in our diet and I, how can we calculate it? I will show you a little uh, demonstration at the end of the video. Okay, so the second step is carefully select the forage because select a forage which is low in potassium. If we compare the bursim with the corn silage, the bursim has four times more potassium as compared to this corn silage so carefully select the forest so that 
the TCAD is should be as low in the negative side as possible so we need to add minimum possible analytic sides at it, the costing of the field is also important then you after using the formula that you can see on your screen as well by using this formula you can put the value of sodium potassium sulfur and chloride ions and you can calculate uh, the decad that a unit is milli equivalent per 100 gram of the dry matter as i have shown you earlier so you can calculate by using the formula as i have shown you on the screen it should be minus 10 to minus 15 milli equivalent per 100 grams of the dry matter so you can start with the magnesium sulfate if you are not okay with the commercial products you can start with this uh, uh, magnesium sulfate start with 0.5 percent of the dm then start with the, mm, the calcium chloride and do not exceed by 0.8 percent of the dm because it can lead to a dry matter reduction never go with the sodium chloride never go with the potassium chloride because along with the chloride ions it also supplies the sodium and the potassium that are the cations so avoid them so i have seen many of the farmers which are feeding the salt in the closer period it's not a good idea to feed the salt in the closer period as it has a positive cations okay you are when you are feeding uh, the cationic salts sorry when you are feeding the anionic salts remember one thing whenever the decat is in the negative side like the, it is minus 10 to minus 15 milli equivalent the metabolic acid doses it increases the urinary urinary excretion of the calcium so you need to supplement the calcium in the diet as well so 1.5 to 1.8 percent dm uh, the calcium should be provided so the calcium should be given at the rate of 1.5 to 1.8 percent of the dry matter to meet the calcium requirement of the animal because the excretion of the calcium is increased so remember one thing whenever you are going to use the anionic salts always carefully select i would recommend you to start with the magnesium sulfate and end up with the calcium chloride avoid of using ammonium salt because they can lead to ammonia toxicity if they are not used in a proper way and when you start using the decad then after some period of time uh, like a week you can check the ph of the animal and then you can decide whether you need to add more anions in the diet or you need to reduce the level of anions in the diet depending on the upon the ph of the animal and finally i would share some of the commercial products available in the market in pakistan we have uh, this biochlor by UN Enterprises, you can use anion booster by Better Traders, you can use uh, Animate by Ghazi Brother, all of them, they are very good products, they have very good result and keep one thing in mind, yes it is costly but the results are very fair, the parturition is very easy the animal experiences less metabolic disorders after the parturition and these are the most basic things that are important to take the maximum production and it is also important that after the parturition if the decad balancing in the transition is good the dry matter intake by the animal is also good after the parturition i hope so you might have you okay in this case you need to go to the google chrome or anything you're using so you need to go to the feedipedia yeah, you can see that i'm going to search uh, this feedipedia okay then this feedipedia.org is a very good website where you can get some basic information about uh, various uh, proximate analysis of the various forages and the, the ingredients you are using in the feed for example i'm going to search this corn silage okay I am searching this you can get some basic information about the corn silage okay just scroll down you can get um, you can click the maize silage and now this website will provide you the nutrition tables about this thing you can see the description nutritional aspects nutrition tables and references I am going to click the nutrition tables so you can see you can get the dry matter the crude protein, crude fiber, uh, NDF, ADF, lignin, ether extract, starch, and gross energy. So, as just what I'm talking about, the mineral profile. And you can see in the corn silage, the potassium and the sodium, these two, which are major cations I'm talking about. So, 13.9 gram per kg of DM is the potassium, and 0.2 gram per kg of DM is the sodium. So, you can compare it with some other fodders available in different time scale. For example, if I compare it with the, the bird seam, 
you can see you can compare the cations between bursim and uh, this uh, corn silage okay i'm going to add this bursim fresh aerial part okay so the nutrition profile you can see that the potassium contents you can see 45.9 gram per kg of dm so it's pretty high when you're comparing the bursim fodder with that of the corn silage it's about four times more than that of the corn silage so you need to select the forage accordingly and by the help of this website feedipedia.org you can check the mineral profile sodium and potassium present in your ration and then you can calculate it provided the the formula i have shared with you already and you can calculate it and you can manage your rations thank you